to the Texas Go Radio Show. I'm your host, Pretorius. This is part 11 of the 1803 live stream on Benjamin and Vertec Tactical. Out of me. I do think, I'm telling you right now, that G9 ammo, I've shot it extensively. I've seen the testing. Uh, it's been provided to a bunch of, like, good officers who are on the border getting in gunfights. One dude killed four cartels in a gunfight uh, that were trafficking people and drugs across the border. He killed four people through... The, the SUVs they were driving because they were shooting, took cover behind the car. Well, this bullet will penetrate intermediate barriers such as glass, uh, metals, sheetrock, wood. And then when it hits soft tissue, it dumps all the energy. So you can find more, you can actually see more of the examples on YouTube or wherever if you look at G9 external hollow point. It's like incredible technology. I mean, just think just, about how insane that is. It can go through glass and then when it hits soft tissue, that's when it like goes, and then you can see like how it just causes so much damage around a four around. times the average pistol bullet, four times the expansion of the average pistol bullet as far as the wound cavity. Um, think about what that means. So you can get hit, you know, few, several inches away from a lung or a heart or a liver, and that and that expansion is like a uh, is like as if you just shot someone right through the heart. You get close to rifle type wounding performance out of these bullets. And it's been proven time and time again. Um, people ask me all the time, they're like, are you worried about over penetration issues? I'm like, no, it's made if you hit a person to stop in soft tissue. But if they're behind a car door, you know, or shooting at you around a car and you hit the, the corner of the car, it, it'll go through that and still hit them. So, I mean... Because it's like got a spiral thing on it where yeah. it, just, it just goes... And so if people want to know why how that works... As it's spinning, it has like a, it looks like a blender almost. It creates a vortex and just goes shred and everything soft just gets mangled right around it. And so that's why it's uh, such a good, good round. Like a, a lot of our local law enforcement has, have actually switched to it. So like I've seen all, almost all of them, yeah, almost every single one. Um, it's an incredible bullet. Like people, like, just to say this, like I know the owner, and like he's very, very like serious. This isn't just a gimmicky thing to him. He's like passionate about it, and uh, phenomenal people working over there. Like dudes who really care. And actually, like half their company came and trained at one of our classes. And man, like, what a group of people. And uh, it was interesting because people ask, they'll say, "Well, do you really trust it? It's newer. It's only been out there for five, six years." And I'm like, enough to bet my family's life on it because I've seen it. It took me almost two years before I, I shot thousands of rounds of it, just testing reliability, seeing it in ballistic gel, getting the reports from people who were fielding it, and I was like. No, this is this is legit. When you actually see the science behind it, actual science, it's a pretty incredible uh, thing. It's actually kind of scary too. Like it's pretty terrifying to see that the technology is getting that advanced. Yeah, uh, Brandon, have you used TUI ammunition? If so, what do you think of it? TUI, I have not. Brandon, how do you feel about eight point six blackout? A man that I could respect, my ninja. <laughs> Let's talk about eight point six blackout. <laughs> um, basically, Genesis Arms is revolutionizing the first eight point six blackout. There's a couple other companies out there. Q, all that stuff. It is a three hundred to four hundred grain bullet. To put that in perspective, the AR fires a 55 to 75 grain bullet. So it is basically six to eight AR-15 projectiles, but in one bullet. And it is, a, so it's a massive projectile coming out of a short barrel rifle suppressor. Remember the 300 blackout, the really quiet, tiny one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the bigger brother version of that. So instead of an AR-15, it's now going to be in an AR-10 platform, so the bigger AR platform. But now they took the biggest bullet that could possibly fit in that thing, and they, they shoved it into a casing, and it's going to be a subsonic, Ooh. massive, it's quite... So that means it'll sound like... I wish I had permission from Genesis to show people the videos, but... No, like, subsonic with a suppressor means this is the sound. Yep. You pretty much only hear the bolt cycling. Yeah. And you're firing this massive, like, it's like a, it's like a big game hunting gun because of the size of the bullet. And so, like, right now, I already told Genesis, this is just putting it out there for the world to see. Uh, I get number one. I, told, I tell Cody that every week. I'm like, okay, like, what's the status? I'm like, because I get serial number 00001. He's like, that's not how serial numbers work, bro. I'm like, okay, whatever. Just <laughs> take a knife and engrave 01 on it. I don't care. Just I get number one. So it's coming. I was talking to one of the guys at Genesis. They're like, we had a serial number for you that was like hilarious. It was like 336633. But they got so uh, slammed that I was like, yeah, no problem, obviously. Just, like, they're like now really backed up because it's so po uh, popular. Dude, what, I'm not even joking. I think, that, I think that Genesis is going to be another Remington, Smith & Wesson, uh, Winchester, you name it. Like, I think Genesis really is going to be that high of a... Yeah, it's mind-blowing what it's doing. And it's all... And the guy that is, like, one of the founders is a bear who wouldn't wear a mask because... And he was, like, a really high, highly respected war veteran, part of, you know, the SWAT team on a police department. He wouldn't wear a mask because he understands, you know, he's been through senior school and all that. He's like, no, that's how they... That's how they try and get you to consent to the next thing. He totally saw through it. So he put that energy towards his own private business and now it's featured in John Wick. He's crushing... And uh, I'm just so happy for him. It's just such evidence that 
You know, if you hold the line and you do what's right, you know, he got fired. And that could be people start drinking, devastated. I have a family. Oh, I have a family to feed. Everyone cocks. But instead, he took that masculine energy, that high honor, that good man, and he put it towards Dennis's firearms. And now they're doing awesome. But people don't believe that, like, it's, and I get it, it's hard to believe that there are people like that out there. Like, everyone's got an ulterior motive. Everyone's got an angle. Everyone's got something, um, you know, a hidden agenda. And it's yeah. true. Most people do. And it's Cody it's, doesn't, though. And Cody doesn't. Um, and that's the, that's the main thing is, like, when you, when you see the group of people that I've gotten to surround myself with, um, it, it is something incredible. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of Cody and those guys over at Genesis. I'm really proud of the dudes at G9. I'm super, extremely excited about that. I, dude, I already have plans for next year's Bertaria Festival. Yeah, he's already, like, already ready to go. He's ready already booked. <laughs> like, it's, it's going to happen. Sounds honorable. I'd love to see Ira at the gun range. You've, you've probably trained some Iras over the years, right? A couple. Where they're just, like, scared billionaires, like, oh, Jesus. Right. It's pretty funny, though. It's pretty funny. Usually those dude, people are, like, really, um, how to explain it? They're either really cool. Or they're really like a special boy, like not in the sense of like I'm so rich I can no, but they're just like difficult, like like they just can't just chill and be cool. I don't know. How to describe it. <laughs> Everything has to be criticized. Um, does Brandon have any thoughts on 3D2A Foscad, or is it just we have Caltech at home? I have no idea what that means. They have a Caltech, which is okay. I don't know what, which model Caltech they have, but the 3D printing stuff, like um, I mean, I. I, I don't know anything really about it. I know some of like the people who have like experimented with like they, they do three D printing uh, with metals now. They do it with they cars. Can, like, I know they do that I know with cars. Works, which is a company I really like. They make a they make a phenomenal suppressor. They three D print uh, a suppressor without a metal, and uh, it's an incredible suppressor. Uh, so yeah, that stuff is pretty cool. Uh, I know there's like a bunch of legal challenges to it right now. Like New York was like, well, we should do background checks on three D printers because people could make guns with it. I'm not even joking. That's a real thing. Ugh, they're so stupid. Bear Blegic says, I, I love the Glock 17. Good advice. <laughs> I would recommend the SIG P226 also. I definitely don't recommend the 32 caliber inner city NIG revolver. I hate that gun. Don't know why. Who said this? Uh, Bear Blegic, he probably got shot. That was the one who shot him. A 32 caliber. Um, that's who shot him. Bear Blegic. What, what do you think of the SIG P226? I will, I, mm. Hor you Fuck hate you. it. Yeah, you hate it. I hate it. I'm. I, it's like, let me guess, you want to carry that one because the Navy SEALs carried it back in the 1990s? Yeah, Bear Blegic's a mess. It's okay. You can upgrade to the SIG P320 and hopefully you don't drop it. Does it go through white people in Baltimore City? <laughs> Bear Blegic, you briefly owned that you were there looking for heroin and now you're back to being a victim again. And you even blamed your heroin addiction on the fact there was a roller rink in your town. <laughs> it's time to just own that you made bad decisions. <laughs> Inner city blacks are like coyote. And one of those bad decisions is having <laughs> continuously... Well, no, I'll say having a bear name. I had a bear name at one point in time. Was that a poor decision? Yes, it was. Why? Because I didn't know enough in order. I, it just, I mean, make excuses, whatever. Bad decision. It's like, yeah, build a fence. Shut the fuck up. Okay, I like how Brandon emphasized the 19 part of the 1990s. Good, good, good catch, Coddington. A lot of gun guys hate SIGs. Do you get increased performance with the 9mm hollow points when using a PCC? Um... That ammunition, I'm assuming what he means is like the ammunition coming out. No, not really. I mean, the only PCC that I like is a uh, pistol caliber carbine. So it's like an AR-15, but smaller for to shoot 9mm. I'm like, first off, you're going to carry an AR-15. Why not carry the 5.56? You get the maximum performance. You already got the gun. But second, like you have a 300 blackout, which is a small AR, which you can get phenomenal performance out of. But yes, if you want to go to something like the, the Flux Defense Raider, which uh, unfortunately uses the SIG upper, like the slide, but it's a... It's an actual, it's, it's a gun made by a company called Flux Defense. And that one right there is a super cool, it's like it makes a pistol, it's a chassis that turns it into a braced or SVR pistol. And what it can do is, it's really tiny. And it's Spool bears trolling you. What do you think is the greatest gun manufacturer to ever exist? High point? He's trying to troll. That's okay. You can just let me return. <laughs> Brandon, are 1911s too expensive or a classic? I actually personally don't own a 1911. Because I'm not gay. I'm just playing. No, they're seriously, they'll be, they are cool guns. They are nice. really cool guns. Um, there's the 2011, which is the more modern one, um, is really cool. Um, people like them. They're great guns. I just, the older ones are cool, like, um, like replica pieces or like, um, like the actual old school ones. Beautiful guns. They shoot cool. They're great. They feel great. It's just, I wouldn't consider it an actual legit modern combat pistol anymore. So, uh, there's a lot of good chat here. Denmark Bear says, I need some dopamine. So I bought a rifle, a Seiko S20. No idea what that is. Hello, Longbow Bear. Uh, Charles says, too bad swords aren't viable until ammo runs out and <laughs> only the reload wizards have guns. Well, I, I know a guy that's really looking forward to swords and let's just say he's in the gun world. Uh, Steven Seagal likes them. I hate hand grip safety. Shut up, Bear Belichick. Oh, um, yeah, because Steven Seagal is like totally legit. Dude, Bear Belichick, will you admit you were buying heroin in Baltimore? Uh, Keeper of the Mountain says 762 times 25. I don't know what that means. Uh, I think he's talking about 300 blackout. It's 300 blackout. But the thing about the 300 blackout that I found a little jarring is it looks exactly like an AR, but if you shoot the wrong bullet, it explodes. So I was like, I don't want, I, I would, if I mix up a magazine, it just explodes in my hand. Right. 
So I just, yeah, I just have an AR. If you put a, a, a 300 blackout round, it will chamber into a 5.56 like AR, and it'll go into the mag, it'll go into the chamber, and then your gun will literally blow up in your face. Longbow says swords and bows and arrows, I'm down. Yeah, I mean, so, bows and arrows are pretty sweet. How much was heroin in 1992, Bear <laughs> He's like, ah, well, inflation really fucked me. Let's talk about the caliber of Bear Pelagic's character, says Josh. Uh, Bear Pelagic says, high point 9mm rifle was $175 25 years ago. The battery still works on the laser sight. Cheap gun that still works. Oh, Bear Pelagic. You're just such a fucking clown. Please stop. Steven Seagal oils his guns with his hair grease. Oh. <laughs> well, black is in the name, so you should know it's randomly explosively violent, says Dan Zag. And Coddington says, Bear Pelagic really getting roasted today. <laughs> Fuck you, Coddington. All right, so I think we're going to land the plane because I do have another stream later that I told the guys I would go to, and if I talk too much, I'll start sounding retarded. Uh, 300 blackout blows out because of a primer problem. My friend ha hand reloads and explained it to me. Well, that, that's a different thing. If you have a bad primer or some, something, that the bullet just blows up. That, that can happen with just factory ammo, too. Um, people are getting bad Winchester white box rounds, and they're blowing up guns. It's just not, that can happen. But the, what we were saying was if you put a 300 blackout round into your... Two two three five five six AR fifteen, it, and you chamber it, and you press the trigger. It will. It's too big of a bullet to go down the, the, the barrel, so it'll just blow up. I once blew a hole in my knee with a G twenty two because I'm a dot 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 retard. Mer Marlon Weaver action is the only gun I know rated for T Rex, and it works too. Just don't know why the T Rex was carrying a bag of candy. I have no idea what that means. Yeah. Well, where can we find you later, Big Bear? Look for a tweet. What does that mean? I think they're saying where are you gonna stream later. Oh, it's on uh, on the uh, Tower Gang. Thanks, BB Cotton Bears. Kyneton, final super chats if we have any. So don't forget. Oh, and I have uh, big news that we're working on with uh, the guys over at uh, Bertaria Times app, the social media platform, are going to work on classes where bears can set up classes uh, for other bears. I think it's going to be, and you can get like a, a badge on the social media app that says you've completed a class and we'll take. Uh, he was trying to do this back in 2020. That's one of the, the, the sales pitches for his investment scheme of 2020 were classes for children and for other bears and whatnot. For some reason, he mentioned basket weaving a few times, I think. You know, submissions for ideas for classes you want to teach. Like, to really get ahead of the breakdown of education, I think that that would be phenomenal. Like, imagine if a welder has a welding class and you get a little badge. Or like, uh, I think that would be phenomenal. Is Brandon planning opening a training on hang gliders? <laughs> Okay, all right, so uh, unauthorized.tv, P.O. Box 490, Sandpoint, Idaho, 83864. The, the sixth magazine will be for sale very soon. Uh, everyone's worked really hard on it. Perfect timing, Cod Oso is opening a school shortly. Are you opening a school, Coddington? A school for pun writing? Uh, thanks, Brandon. Stay buzz. Yeah, so today's episode has been all about character evaluation, shooting zombies, uh, bear plegics, horrible mistakes, and, uh, and don't forget to donate to the land, the Ozark land, and get a ticket for next year's festival. That's Bertaria Campgrounds.com. Do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, just... Really important to me is like, it's another form of despair. It's like when you, it is tough. Like there's a lot of fucked up people out there and people aren't perfect to make mistakes. And like, you might think someone's cool and then maybe they're not so cool. And like something I like. All right. So uh, I'm going to actually re rewind this and, and make this another video of his final thoughts. Sorry for not talking too much during this. I don't really have too much to add whenever it comes to ammunition and, and all of that kind of talk. I'm uh, fairly ignorant whenever it comes to all of that. But uh, this is the Texas Goat Radio Show, and I'm your host, Pretorius. As always, till next time.